Hello there, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. Uh, for part 3 of this week's update. At this point, a lot of the other things I have left to talk about are a little bit bitty, so we're going to be jumping around a bit between different topics. But I thought I'd start off with how this train system works with the stone down here, because it's sort of, it's sort of interesting, and I had to do some fixing of it last time, so it's kind of relevant. The problem that we're looking to solve here is how to get the stone from the Andragon spaceship to everywhere it's needed. Because the stone is needed both down on the ground, so the strain has to go down the space elevator, and also up here in fairly large quantities. Now if we had LTN running and we had the LTN uh, space exploration integration, which I've already made a video about, then that would be quite easy. But we don't, and so we have to work around it with uh, various sort of clever train setups. And the problem is that our normal train system, where you say go from A to B where, whenever you can, isn't really going to work here. So for example this train is set to go from Naquium Crystal Pickup to then go to Naquium Crystal Drop. So anytime a Naquium Crystal Drop station says, yes, yes, I'd like some please, the train will head off over there. And that works fine, as long as all of the stations are on the same level. So at the moment you see we're getting the destination full off it because there isn't a station to go to, but that's fine. Here, we can't do that because there's a station over here on this floor and then there is also one down on Norvis down in the corner here where things are brought down the secondary elevator where additional stone should be dropped off and so we want the train to go whenever either one of those is requesting anything and this is a little bit tricky because you can't send a train directly to another surface you have to go via an elevator first like for example this scrap train here is probably doing so yes you see this one is going from Andragon spares it's going to go to Norvis secondary then down to somewhere down on the ground to drop stuff off then back up Norvis secondary and so it's going to it's, it's got the loop in there with these elevators put in there as well and so that makes it a little bit more complicated to set the trains up. And so, the way we've come up with, and I say we, the way Tristan came up with, uh, credit where it's due, to fix this, is with this slightly more complex system. And so, the train will start at Andragon Stone Pickup. It will wait there until it's full, until it's been inactive. And so that makes sure it's managed to fill up completely with stone, it's got a full set of batteries, charged batteries in it, and then it'll watch for a signal saying, hey, somewhere is short of stone. And that signal can be triggered by either of the stations. So, for example, over here, the one that we're using up in space, we have a connect, we have a cable going to the uh, warehouse here that's going to this combinator, and the combinator watches for there being less than 10,000. And if there's less than 10,000, it outputs one stone signal onto the network, and that bounces around the network. It gets sent over to, and, and this red cable here goes all the way up to the uh, the spine of the uh, of, of the rail system. It's sent all the way along there to the station we were just looking at. Over here, it comes down this red cable and is fed into the station here, where it's passed to the train. I guess sent to train. So the train will watch, and so if that if that say station runs out of stone, then we'll get a one on the circuit network and the train will trigger trigger and also this stone drop station will be activated and so over here we've also got it monitoring the quantity of stone in the warehouse and saying enable the station if there's less than 10,000 in the warehouse and so I can take advantage of still being in creative mode by just deleting this warehouse and then replacing it and that means that it will now be completely empty so over here we are outputting that one that one stone which will have summoned the train and over here we've activated the, the uh, station and so you can see that the train over here one it was one of these trains it's set off from the Andragon stone station which is here. So the train is set off. It's going to come over here where it will then pull into the station like this and unload all of the stone. So this is, this is working fine. We now have a supply of stone available over here. The next, for the next trick, the, stone, the train will then try to go to Norvis Secondary down, but we don't want it to go down the elevator at this point. So the, uh, the clever bit is that we have an additional station here called Norvis Secondary Down. So this means that instead of going down the elevator, the train will immediately go to this station, because it can, that's the nearest Norvis Secondary Down, uh, and then it'll move on to the next instruction. Well, the next instruction is Stone from Space, but that station doesn't exist here, so it'll skip that one, it'll skip that one, and it'll return over to Andrigan Stone Pickup, like this. There we go. So it's now heading back to the stone pickup station in order to go and get some more stone for next time it's needed. And we've got uh, three point nine thousand stone here, and we're waiting and we're looking for ten thousand. So it's going to have to do a few runs to top this back up again. But you can see how the system works. If this station isn't asking for stone, then this stone drop station here won't, will be inactive. It'll have a, it'll uh, it'll be disabled. So we'll have this sort of red X on it. So it'll skip the stone drop, and then it'll go down. Then if it gets a signal from the ground saying, "Hey, we need some stone," then it'll go down the elevator, drop the stone down there, and then come back up again. 
and this system is now working. I did have to make some uh, modifications in order to make it work. I had to move the entire station one extra notch this way, so you'll notice that this station is slightly out of line with all of the other stations along here, and that's because you need to have room to put this station in for, for it to uh, stop, for it to sort of stop at on the way out. And that meant I had to move the warehouse across, I had to move everything across, but fortunately we've got the dolly pickers mod, and that is fantastically useful when you have a warehouse full of stone that you want to move around, and it just it makes things so much easier. Tristan did have to repair a couple of other parts of the uh, of the system. So for some reason, this elevator over here was not connected into the uh, into the network. We didn't have this red cable coming through here, and this happened because, or rather, when I say happened, this wasn't already fixed because previously we've been sending yes, we've been sending iron ore and stone down the elevator, but we'd only had one place where those were going to, so we didn't need to do this sort of this cle clever system. We'd been doing it with some of the other stuff like vulcanite, but we hadn't been doing it with this elevator, and so we didn't have the signal coming up here. So that has now been fixed. We're getting the signal up, and we can now we now know when when the uh, ground is calling for more stone. Tristan says he's also put in a second stone train for going down to the ground. I'm a little bit puzzled by that because I don't think that's necessary. But maybe this oh maybe it's maybe it's over here. Maybe it's the ground. Yes, yeah, probably the ground train. So we now have a stacker up here which has lots of room in it, and then stone trains that can come in here and fill up. That the yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, so there's an addition now an additional train that goes to this station. So you can see we've got three of them in fact now because sometimes we get through stone very very quickly particularly when we start making circuits in large quantities because green circuits need lots of need lots of bricks which need lots of stone so yeah that re that re that drags a lot of it through the system I forgot to mention in the last stream that I tested firing one of these beams at uh, at Fenestra. So we've we've gone through various we've got various different beams running over here. So for example, we've got the one that charges up the Explorer ship, and that's getting a 65% transmission efficiency because that's in in Norvis orbit. It's not very it's not all that far away, and there's no atmosphere in the way. So that one's quite good. And for, sort of somewhere in the middle, we've then got Snowdrop. This one only gets 52% because it's beaming quite a lot further. It's going all the way out to Snowdrop, and it has to go through a planetary atmosphere. So it's going all the way from Kalidus, all the way out to Snowdrop, right down here. And that, so that's that's what. So you lose another 10% transmission efficiency across there, and then presumably a little bit for the atmosphere as well. We've also got one that's shining at Stardust. That has a transmission efficiency of about 10%. So because it's going, it's not just going. All the, way through, all the way through the solar system, it's then heading all the way out from Kalidus, all the way out to Stardust. That means we're only getting 10% of the energy through, so that's even worse. Fenestra, it turns out, is even, even worse. I tried firing this one out at Fenestra, and I was getting 0.34% uh, transmission efficiency, which is um, genuinely terrible, <laughs> but that, I suppose so. That means if we throw a gigawatt at it, we're going to be getting about 3 megawatts through, which... To be fair, depending on how much power is required out in Fenestra by the Stargate, that might be manageable. We might be able we might be able to use this to power it reasonably sensibly. If not, we'll use the old system that I used back in my 0.5 playthrough, where you charge up the heat battery on a ship, and then the ship flies out to Fenestra or wherever, and then you, you pump water through the ship from Fenestra, turn it into steam, and then store that in big tanks out in the in the remote place, and then you can turn that steam into electricity as you need it. So there are ways around this. We or alternatively we could set up some sort of nuclear power station out there as well. So, um, or we could just have it powered when a ship goes out there and power it directly from the ship. So there are definitely ways around this, but looking at the, the, uh, the beam energy transmission efficiency is comically low for going all the way out to Fenestra. Also, we need to point this back at the combat ship because I've um, uh, the sh I, I borrowed this one to test what sort of transmission efficiency we we're going to get, and this could mean that we may end up with that ship getting cold and not working. So we better better fix that, and I'll put that on the on the to do list as well. As stuff gets demolished or moved around or re whatevered you tend to find that a certain amount of stuff that you don't really want ends up in, in the logistics system over here and all of the storage area. And which is that's why we've got these extra three, sort of four, three warehouses at the bottom that are collecting miscellaneous stuff that isn't going onto the bus. So in these we have useful things like belts that have been produced or uh, things that have been brought up from the ground like warehouses and, and fluid fluid tanks and these are great because it get, they're, they're needed when we when we extend things so when we build up belts when we build up uh, when we want warehouses any any tanks that sort of thing all of these can be brought out of here and then we can we can summon more up from the ground they'll be unloaded by the train here and they'll just rattle down through the system and end up at the bottom the downside is that sometimes you end up with stuff you don't really want. So, for example, if you've been messing around with some of the science areas, if you've pulled up one of the one of these machines, for example, you might end up with a load of the uh, of, of the data cards in there. And so, every so often, I try and come over here and have a, have a bit of a look through the uh, through the storage system and try and pull out any stuff that really shouldn't be there. 
So all of this is things we use for construction. We've got various belt types, and, and uh, these, are, these are to be put into spaceships to be taken off to other planets, so we're all these. Storage, splitters, all belt inserters, pipes, all this sort of stuff, all these things you need for building up planets. We've got an absolutely crazy number of um, roboports and train parts, but um, Celevi, I'm not quite sure why those are so high. They shouldn't really be, but we've got an excessive number. What can you do? This one is similar. There's a little bit of overlap, so we've still got some belts in here, and that's because the the, uh, the warehouses aren't particularly sorted. Hit silly number of mining drills. Hook crazy number of these greenhouses, and that's from ripping out the uh, the free power systems that we uh, we used to have. That's probably part of the reason for some of the pulverizers as well. And lots and lots of buildings, basic beacons, and and so on. But then you get some of these intermediates. So these immersium gear wheels and steel gear wheels should be taken out and put somewhere more sensible. The asteroid belt probes should be put somewhere more sensible. These uh, deep space catalogs definitely should be put somewhere else because these are these are very expensive. They, we should be using those. And then, well, this one's not too bad. We should probably do something a bit more sensible with the meteor defense ammo. But basically, all of these, most of this stuff is stuff that might come under demand. Uh, we could do a tidying up the uranium ore, although if you pick that up, it tends to hurt a bit. So you see what I mean? Most of this is stuff that we might want to build or we might want to put into a spaceship to take off to somewhere to be built. So all of the, most of this is fine. But there are a few things that every so often I feel like I should go around and tidy up and take off and put back where they belong. So I did a little bit of that last stream. Um, apparently, I didn't do a very complete job of it because there's still some stuff left or maybe this has been accumulated since I did that I'm not sure but at the moment it's not the end of the world because there is still a lot of space in this warehouse so things seem to be going quite well here uh, we don't have too much miscellaneous junk in the, um, in the in the storage system or at least when I say too much we don't we haven't filled up the third warehouse so things are manageable at least at this point and that's a good thing too because if we needed a fourth warehouse I'm not quite sure where we put it because there's train stuff in the way over here maybe we put it over here and have some deep space underground belts taking these belts through and, and, and onwards but there, there are always possibilities, we just haven't decided what they are yet. Additionally, in orbit, Mark has expanded our power production even, even further, so we now have crazy amounts of power available. Um, I can show you on here, but because again, once again, because I'm cheating, it's always day, uh, that, that number is twice what it should be. So we should be producing about 80 gigawatts, of which we're using 53 at the moment. If we look back over the last 10 hours, what have we, what have we peaked at? So we peaked at using about, about 60, 67 at this point. And so we, are, we have easily enough power available at the moment. And that means that we, are, yeah, we, sh we should be okay for a good while yet with the amount, number of solar panels we have here. As long as we don't have people putting in too many of the particle accelerators. Uh, the particle accelerators are things that you seem to use the most power. Um, so actually, given, given that we're going to remove all of these at some point, that's going to save 400 megawatts per machine, at least when they're actually running. And there's 16 of them. So that's, got, that's got a decent amount of power to be saving. Uh, although, given that, as I was saying yesterday, we, ha we have now filled these tanks up over here and there's not going to be any trains taking from here. Um, these machines are just going to be asleep from now on. So it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, ooh, we'll rock it. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll leave it. We'll, um, we'll get rid of them anyway, I think, just because I feel like we might as well. Down on the ground, Tristan has sorted out the matter, um, the matter production issues that I was talking about in, uh, in uh, last week's video, I think, possibly the week before. No, I think it was last week's because these tend to be quite efficient about fixing these things. So down here, the, the idea is that we have this system up here, put, crunching down the, through all the core fragments in, and then dumping it all into storage along here and along here where it gets put into trains. If there is an excess, if there's an overflow, then it's supposed to be passed down these belts to these machines that are making matter, and then the matter is stored in these tanks. Uh, and if there's and then if there's overflow from there, we'll then put it into these machines, which will turn into the landfill. So you can see at the moment, as examples go, we've got the copper is trickling through here quite happily. So we're we're turning so copper is still going through and being loaded into the into the train system over here because we don't have a huge supply of copper. We've got I mean there's enough to fill a train up here. Um, just but there is not there's not an absolutely crazy amount of it iron ore on the other hand we seem to have plenty of and so that's being turned into landfill which is drifting off down the belt over here and going into this is our, essentially our dump system so we have um three three warehouses of landfill along here essentially so for example if i come down here if i take if i look in this tank here and if i flush out the the contents of it so we've suddenly got space to put in a load more matter then you'll see that these machines along here will start running again they'll start pumping the matter through into this into this tank here they're starting up in a slightly odd way but i guess they'll all kick in eventually and so you can see that now the uh, the rare metals are pouring through here. Well, we're that means that we're emptying this belt out. However, because we still we're still asking for rare metals elsewhere in the system, that belt is still running, and the and the extra rare metals aren't topping up the uh, the belt down here. So eventually this will run out, or at least it'll it'll stop feeding it into the box here, and eventually this box will run out too. You'll notice now that also the iron one has kicked in and started running, and that was the one that we had too much of. So hopefully, if we look up here now. 
we should see that we will stop making landfill and any excess iron will be passed down to make into matter. However, um, it looks like we have already stopped making landfill. Some, some, some uh, iron must have been taken because this box is no longer full. So my example is rather poor. Uh, however, <laughs> once this fills up again, the intention now is that we have three levels of priority. The first level is that we'll send it off to be put into the trains. The second priority is that we'll, uh, we'll send it down to be made into matter. And if both of those are full, then we'll start making it into landfill because that's just the sort of the emergency sink. And I can't, I can't really demonstrate this because we, uh, the, currently we seem to need all of the resources. Um, but, you know, never mind. We, 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 once, once this chest fills back up again, then we'll start making matter and we can refill that tank. Tristan has also sorted out making the low-level uh, loaders, which this was a thing that was broken by the update, which is why he's had to sort of spaghetti it in in a rather awkward way. So you can see this belt of green circuits that squeeze its way through in here is coming all the way around here uh, to be fed into the in, into the uh, loader production over here. I want to say there must have been an easier way to do this, but I don't know what that way would be. I suppose you could have brought them through up here and across, but that would have been almost as bad. Uh, the red ones are similarly painful. There is a uh, we're, we're, we're splicing off some um, some red circuits here. We're bringing small electric motors in, and then bringing them up and round to down here to be made into the medium, medium, mid tier ones. Uh, the the big electric motors are then being squeezed up here for the blue ones, and then it got a little bit easier. The uh, oh, it looks like we've had to bring some red circuits through here for the for the green ones and the and the purple ones, uh, and then the purple ones are up here. Maybe that kink in the belt there is because the blue re recipe changed. I don't really know, but I do know that he had to, he came in and he fixed this and it caused quite a bit of spaghetti, particularly as you can see down here with the first two tiers. But, you know, at least it's working again and that's the main thing. Mark says he has checked fertilizer production. Uh, that's slightly cryptic. I'm not sure exactly what he means, but I'm guessing it's out here on Big Rid that he's put in all of these bio labs that are producing biomatter, and those are being then fed down and going into these machines over here that are making the um, make, making the the fertilizer in order to make the uh, the Vita blooms in order to make all of the other Vita products. It's possible that's what he means. The other possibility is that he means he's gone over and had a look at this additional possible recipe where you put in nutrient gel as well as all of those basic things and you get 20 fertilizer out instead of 5. So comparing the two recipes, you use a lot less mineral water and but you do use a bit of nutrient gel and then you produce four times as much fertilizer output and you get some contact contaminated sludgy things back out again. I suspect we're probably not using this. The only place we have nutrient gel and deal with the contaminated bio sludge and cosmic water is over in orbit. And I don't know if he's going to be doing any of that over there. Let's have a quick look. And according to factory search, the answer is no. We are not making fertilizer anywhere in Norbit. We are using it here. If I flick over to um, ingredients and search again, it was it these machines? Yes, these machines are taking in fertilizer in order to make uh, nutrient gel, but they're not producing it. So presumably it's being brought up from the ground, where it's being produced down on the ground using the same recipe as we saw out on Bigrid. So we are not using the new recipe. So I suspect that Mark's check fertilizer was just having a look at it and making sure everything was valid and still working, um, and that we didn't want to use the new recipe, which seems absolutely fine to me. Where the new recipe does seem a little unnecessary. I mean, it would be slightly more efficient, yes, but it does. I don't see any real need to upgrade to it. He also said he checked the Immersite, which is out here on Taras, the Immersite planet. So this is where we get all of that sulphur from that I was talking about yesterday. And it looks like, looking at this, we seem to have plenty of the Immers Immersion plates, but a bit of a shortage of the Immersite crystals. Or at least those are being brought through and loaded into the train to be taken up. So, looking at this, I... I suspect some kind of boost is going to be needed over here, making this run faster. The Immersite plate, immer or Immersion plates, these systems don't seem to have been touched. I maybe maybe I missed maybe you just had a quick glance to see if it was working, but I think some upgrade is going to be required over here. But you know that can be on the list way below all of the other things. As long as we don't have any serious problems with the shortage or with the rate that we're producing the emersite crystals at, then I don't see any need to really worry about it unless unless you know he wants to go out and have fun with it. So this seems to be working. I don't think this has been changed because if we look at look at looking at this, we've got still got the uh, the tier one beacons in here. Everything looks still fairly basic over here, so I don't think this has been upgraded. The combat has continued on Norvis, and now that we have sort of lots of power, we've got the uh, anti-biter capsules, we've got lots of, we've got good lasers and all that sort of stuff, or good personal lasers specifically. Uh, I, Tristan and Mark have been doing a lot more uh, combat by actually just going out and shooting stuff themselves. So instead of Tristan's previous system, where we see he was building out all these areas of power coverage and then heavy uh, lasers out out here to shoot to shoot all the biters, instead they've just been flying around with their jetpacks and using the personal defense lasers to kill everything underneath them, and that has allowed them to get from base basically all the way from about, I think they're about here beforehand, they've swept all the way up to here, and you can now see that the biters are, well, the biters are not quite eliminated from the northern hemicircle yet, 
but we've got mo we've got most of them. We've got a, li a safety line across here and then across here, about here, I guess. And then they're sweeping around this way. So maybe next time we'll sort of go in and do a concerted effort just to finish off all the remaining biters in this area uh, and, 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 and tidy the place up a bit. And then consider whether we want to do the same around the bottom side as well. And so we've got to the point where combat is now relatively easy and we aren't dying very much anymore. Although, as I said yesterday, Mark did unfortunately lose a Spidertron somewhere out in the wilds over here. Uh, so that was very, very, that was uh, very sad, very tragic. And so, let's get on to the research. Well, there hasn't been much research done this week. We did Rocket Reusability 17, and that took basically the entire stream, because it required 131,000 science packs. So that's 131,000 times 60 seconds, and then granted, divided by the research speed of 100 and something that we've got over here, and reduced again because of the plus 157% productivity and possibly then reduced even further by these two numbers here, the research speed and research productivity. I'm not sure if those get shown in these in these things or not. I guess I could find out. Let's put another one of these in outside the uh, the beacon down there, and we can see that that is currently running. Yes, that's still running at a two, plus 250% research speed and plus 25% productivity. So the, uh, the bonuses in here are already included. So you know what, I'll do the numbers, I'll put it on screen, I'll tell you how long that research should have taken. And then also remember that we're running the game at about two-thirds speed because our factory's got so, well maybe three quarters occasionally, uh, because our factory's got so big and overwhelming. And so that research took a long, long time. And interestingly, because it only takes relatively basic science packs, it meant that the all of a lot of the factory then just ground to a halt essentially. Because we weren't using any of the material energy or bioscience packs, we don't need any of them in there, so those parts went to sleep. We weren't using any deep space science packs, so we weren't using any naquium, so that's why I've been complaining about the naquium uh, system not having been running recently, so I haven't been able to test how well it's working for throughput. And so there was just this one massive research that we were churning away at. So we're basically, we're doing that as quickly as we could make these tier one astro packs and feed them in there. And they were limited, I think, by the rate that we we're making the catalogs at down here, well, down, down here. And that was limited by all kinds of things. So you see, this is still playing catch up. We're still churning through here as fast as we can. And, and, and firing out these Astro 1 catalogs to try and fill all, up all the buffers that we've uh, we've emptied from doing that research. Once that finally finished, we did knock Deep Space Science Pack 3 on the head. That was only took 2,000 uh, science though, so that was a relatively quick one, but it did churn through quite a lot of the Deep Space Science Pack, so in theory that should have given us a bit of a kick in the Naquium, but it wasn't enough for us to really start churning through it, so we haven't seen that yet. Next up we have the Energy Weapon Damage, which we're currently working on, so this one doesn't really count, but this is, an, this is going to make our uh, personal defence lasers even better, so this is quite worth while but it's using it's using quite an array of different uh, science packs but it's, I don't think it's actually running at the moment because when we looked at these labs yeah they're all quiet they're all, they've all gone to sleep so what are we short of in here Oh, we've run out of basic tech cards and automation tech. Ah, oh, yes, that's because of the uh, the problem with the trains that I <laughs> I fixed in the first video, but then I reloaded a previous save, so that hasn't been fixed. So we just run out of the very very basic stuff. So we'll fix that right at the beginning of the next stream, and then this this will start running again, and we can get the energy weapon damage done quite quickly. We do want to then move on and do the um, do these long range star mappings because these this is something interesting and new that we've unlocked by going out to uh, Fenestra and fixing the Stargate. However, because uh, Mike had gone to bed early because he gets up early in the morning and is a Dad and you know all these although all those sort of excuses uh, we decided we'd, we'd wait to do this one because it's plot relevant until he was back so we'll be doing that fairly early in the next uh, in the next stream and this only requires 125 science packs but it does require lots and lots of different ones it does require some deep space and it requires lots of the astro ones so we're going to be pulling through a lot of them I'm just quite glad that's such a small number so we'll uh, we'll find out what we can we'll see what we can learn about distant galaxies I that's very interesting. I don't know how we're going to get to... I don't know where those are going to appear. That's, that's going to be very, very interesting to find out. So, yeah, make sure you come along to see that one. <laughs> And on that note, that does in fact bring us to the end of the episode. So yes, come back on Monday, that is tomorrow, if, I, if I've got my maths correct with all these episodes, uh, when we shall be doing this research and finding out what's going on out there, and we shall be fixing the uh, the train system over here, and many, many other issues besides. Uh, so I, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to finding out what that's going to discover, because we've, we've had the various different levels of um, exploration so far. We've had ones that find planets, we've had ones that find stars, now this one apparently finds galaxies. So we, are we going to be able to fly off even further? I don't know, I'm looking forward to finding out. I will then be back again on Wednesday when I should be playing some more Satisfactory. I'm going, working on building out little towns to build all kinds of different things at the moment. And at the moment I'm trying to work out how to go off and get aluminium and what the best way to go and mine the bauxite is. So there are 
thoughts to, to be had, meth, uh, train spirals possibly, or at least or a very, very long elevator to be made, uh, because of course the uh, all the aluminium is up at the top of a massive cliff. <laughs> but I think that shouldn't be a, a too insurmountable problem, we'll try and get that one solved reasonably quickly. And then at the end of the week, at the weekend, we'll be back with some more of these videos, giving you a bit of a catch-up, a taster of what's been happening all the way through in the, in the previous stream. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.